to do here, you should be still in your Iridium room, okay? <laughs> so the people who are, uh, who are uh, presenting, they are the only one who are switching the rooms. Everybody else is staying still. Okay, otherwise we're going to, uh, to see again the same presentations that you've been seeing this morning in the first session. Well, welcome back to the second round of uh, project presentations. Um, but before that, uh, I think we have a very small uh, announcement. Yeah. Yes. So Thank from you, our okay. colleague Nicoletta, please go ahead. Uh, hello everyone, really, really short announcement. Um, do we have students here in the room? Could I see you raise your hand up? Higher, higher, let me see you. <laughs> higher and higher. Yes. So three? Students, in general. <laughs> general. Yes. Yeah. All students. All students. <laughs> I'm also. <okay. laughs> Do we have uh, any of the students that received the awards? Just a lot. Of the color. Well, anyway, for students, you might have seen the surprise session that we will have uh, starting at three. For the students, we will have a separate surprise session happening right here in Arizona. Uh, it's a surprise, so I won't say much, just that don't lose your creativity during lunch. And uh, I will be waiting for you here, and later we will join the plenary, so you will all find so out. So everybody who is, is student, about. or feels like a student, yes. <laughs> yes. it's invited here. Yes. It's the same, think, it's the same it's feeling. It feels like a student. It's very dangerous. <laughs> everybody <laughs> might be here. You'll be here. I'll be here for sure, yes. and I should be there. Okay. So students here, everybody else in the same place in the radio. We start over there. Okay, thank you very much, Nicoletta. And then, uh, once again, for the presenters, uh, let me uh, introduce, uh, introduce you. Uh, the way at least it, it worked out during the last session, uh, you're kindly of requested to have your time here, have a wonderful time here while presenting your project. Mm -hmm. We we'll kindly ask you to try to uh, do it in around 12 minutes. Uh, I will uh, I will put also the time and uh, I'll show you when you have like five, four minutes still to go. And after each presentation, <coughs> don't get stuck the 12 minutes like it's cut off and that's it. Okay, continue, finish your presentation, but just to no. know. Uh, and then when this is done, we will uh, take comments, questions from the, the, uh, from the people. Uh, in the room. Does it make sense? Is it okay? Still friends? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, we'll start with a project coming from Czech Republic, from Brno University of Technology. It's called Platsum, Personality Learning Approaches and Teaching Styles in Undergraduate Mathematics. Please. Well, so thank you very much for a nice introduction. Uh, what uh, we already heard and we can see here, we uh, will be talking about how learning and teaching mathematics uh, can be related to personality of the students and possibly of the teachers too. But first let us introduce ourselves uh, shortly. So here you can see the famous professor Yuri Rogovchenko from <laughs> our partner university, University of Agder, and uh, uh, me, myself, I'm Even more famous, <laughs> <laughs> because he's my, like, follower. <laughs> coming from Brno University of Technology. Uh, so, uh, shortly about the partnership, in fact, uh, my institution is a part of a larger consortium called SATEC, Central European Institute of Technology, based in Brno. And these six dots you can see here represent those 
six institutions, university, either university or research institute. So BUT is uh, one of the institutions. Uh, some of them may recognize the symbols or the logo from uh, uh, if, if you just uh, stopped by the Czech uh, stands yesterday and uh, to some of the small things there. So these are coming from Brno. Uh, and uh, as well for University of Arder. Uh, in fact, uh, University of Arder has two campuses in the very south of Norway. Uh, the first one is in a larger city, Kristiansand, and the second one in the small one, Grimstad. And what's inter interesting about Kristiansand, Kristiansand had its own brewery, so some of <laughs> you may also encounter this yesterday at the Norwegian stand. Good so beer facilitates learning. <laughs> uh, to be honest, this from those two countries, from the partner countries, this is my favorite beer. So <laughs> that's why I brought it here. That's and a Czech. No, it's Norwegian. Yeah, but this is something that is said by a Czech. I have a different opinion, yeah. so I like Czech beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mutual exchange, you see. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the, especially when we were collaborating with uh, Metric, which is a center for research, innovation, and coordination of mathematics teaching. It's one of the five, I guess, centers well, of excellence in Norway. Eight now. Eight now. But okay. the only in mathematics. And the only one in mathematics. So this is uh, our particular partner at University of Arden. So uh, what was uh, I, our original idea was that uh, we as a human beings uh, represent a variety of uh, pro uh, properties and and so on. We are all different in a lot of ways, but still, uh, although we are different, we can have a similar problems or issues, and one of them definitely can be with learning mathematics. So this was the starting idea for our project, and here I give floor to my colleague. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you, you know, he is young and I'm old enough, I saw dinosaurs and I still can say things, you remember when I was young it was like that. So this is exactly this situation. I will give you just some very brief information about what was happening years back and then how it was projected and what we have nowadays and then back and then we'll make some conclusions of that. So uh, it was an experiment with the Calculus 1 course done by one of the professors at the American University. So his name is Stephen Wilson, and he was given exactly the same exam to students in 2006 in the fall semester uh, as it was given years back in 1898. And I was already, uh, I think, the graduate at that time. So uh, he gave this exam, and then he was checking the result. So the SAT mathematics scores, this is like the requirement to enter American University, you need to pass this SAT with reasonable score. So they were nearly identical if compared just numerical data and percentages and the population of the class like art, science, uh, distribution. It was more or less even in both cohorts 20 years ago and now. And what is happening that the contents of teaching didn't change much, so it was more or less the same stuff. Then, what we see as results, in 1989, 27% received A, 23 Bs in this course, with that exam. And in 2006, when they are graded on the scale of 2006, then we have much better performance. 32% has got A, and 37% has got B. So we see like it's quite an interesting improvement, but if you now grade those students on the scale from 1989, then we see that only 6% of those current students receive still grade A, and uh, 21 is the drop from 37 for Bs. So what is even more interesting is when they grade the class of 89, then 52% are A's, 26 B's, so we were excellent students when the dinosaurs were around. <laughs> now, uh, this is really a serious problem. So something should be done. We know that the level of education uh, should be maintained high. 
there is more demand for educated graduates, uh, the problems are appearing just like that. So we have students who seem to know more and have better knowledge, but it's not the case. So what he says is that I'm inclined to conclude that the 2006 students are not as well prepared as the corresponding group was in 1989, despite there being significantly more competition to get into this university today than ever before. As it stands, universities have no way of rejecting applicants who do not know arithmetic adequately for college level mathematics. So uh, there is a high demand for education. There is a high competition. Students have low knowledge. The university cannot reject them. We need to do something about this. And I suppose that now we come to this big idea. So the big idea is that one side doesn't fit all. We need to have more individual approach to students. We need to respect their learning attitudes, their personality profile, and take into account many factors. That makes the problem really very complex, but uh, we have some ideas about this. And Yosef will be talking about this right now. Yes, thank you, Yuri. So now, thanks to the support we got uh, from the Norway grant for our project Latsum, we could uh, uh, go on these ideas, with these ideas, so with implementing, what we implemented in the project was that we designed a questionnaire for the students, uh, then uh, collected some data, uh, and uh, did some data analysis, and then we saw what happened. That was the original plan. But uh, of course, uh, sometimes the life is hard and things are not going as we wish. So we encountered uh, several, say, issues, like especially with data collection. Because, say, for example, in the Czech Republic, it was not that difficult to, to collect some data, or at least some data which can be sufficient for concluding some, uh, coming to some results. But in Norway, it is a serious problem. It was very difficult to, to collect enough data, and uh, well, uh, we are still collecting. We are still collecting. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. So, uh, what, what can we say about the results we got from the Czech students? Uh, it is that uh, basically, this uh, the analysis say that this data agree with the previous studies done in Norway because the original idea we already took in Norway, yes. And uh, that some personality types are really disfavored of our ways of teaching, how we teach them. Especially people who are, say, in, in a, a feeling and extroverted groups coming from the, this Myers-Briggs test indicator. And some pers uh, it also revealed that uh, certain personality types uh, prefer a certain learning strategy. So I will not comment about it more, but there are some differences between specific groups of uh, personality types. And uh, also, but uh, it, it could be expected that some of the personalities uh, tend to come less to the lectures uh, and exercises and so on. So the question is if indeed we should keep the idea that uh, one size does fit all or not. Yes, so we still believe that uh, we should follow this approach and to study more and learn more about the issues. So that's uh, <laughs> we are done now. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> sleeping for two more minutes. <laughs> you know, people usually come to those events prepared, so they plan well ahead their presentation. We didn't. <laughs> so I'm very oh. sorry to say that there is something we forgot to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's really important. So after having this positive experience with the closing conference in Prague, where we had many people approaching us and asking questions and making suggestions and suggesting partnership. And after overall very nice experience with those Norway grants, uh, we decided to go further. So we have got a very strong team. And this team now comprises of six countries, seven universities. So we have German partners, Spanish partners, England, 
we have Netherlands, we have two universities in Czech Republic, we have Norway, we have a uh, really, really nice team, and we work really hard. <laughs> so we work on the proposal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I said we work hard. So uh, we, we really are preparing very well for the Erasmus Plus proposal. The deadline is next week. I am coordinating this on behalf of all our partners, yeah. and you really see that we invest energy and this is like the next step, but uh, it's not where we will stop. So we will come back, we will apply for more grants from this project <laughs> in the future, we will launch them further, we will grab all the money, because our estimate is like we have great ideas for 73 million. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only rough estimate, this pre-pilot. Uh, so we will be knocking on your door and begging for more money, and please support us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that probably three quarters of them will go off in order for them to start working even harder with all those beers in front of them. <laughs> but well, life is tough sometimes. And, uh, True. Well, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming again. So, uh, I have a very strong concern about uh, my question is why you think that extroverts. Are, are disfavored in maths because, for example, myself, I'm very extroverted. <laughs> in the high school, in the secondary school, I, I was very good in maths. I don't want to hold for that, but really, I, uh, I mean, according to what tests or what uh, criteria did you say, okay, extroverted? Because, for example, I'm uh, doing HR management and we have a lot of tests uh, using for the personality types. Uh, Belbin test, 16 personalities, and so on, so on, so on. And uh, according to which, I don't know, what standpoint you use to say, okay, extroverts are disfavored, or maybe just for the sake of the experiment. I'll give you an explanation right now. First of all, your glass is empty, so Yossi can help you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you will learn better. And second thing. <laughs> Directly to your question. So when we talk about you being disadvantaged, is because you wish to be taught differently. It's not that you are not ready to uh, get this knowledge, but you want to see something different. You don't want to see my back and me writing something on the board and speaking in monotone voice. So you want to see some movie from YouTube which shows where this mathematical idea has been implemented, and then they say, okay. You see it works, and now we'll prove this theorem. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the way we are planning to do the things. Okay. Uh, it's not that you can't learn, but you can learn much better with more enthusiasm, with better outcomes, if you are fitted a little bit better with your personality profile. Okay. But of course, individually, in the very, very far future, probably you will have just your own package for yourself only. You enter the university, you take tests regularly, you adjust your study program, and then finally you become the absolutely fabulous expert in whatever field you have chosen. Mm -hmm. But this is very expensive, and now we cannot do it. So this is a kind of pilot which, like a teaser, showing that what could be done, but uh, we are experimenting on a smaller scale. Yeah, 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 I see. And just the follow-up question, if I can. Uh, he wants more <laughs> uh, The following question is, what, is, what has higher impact on the learning outcome? The teaching approach or what personality I am? Because my personal opinion is, doesn't matter what we are here, but it matters really what is your teaching approach as a math teacher. And your learning strategy, how you yourself engage in learning. If you are a passive listener to me, whatever I do in the class, I cannot directly mechanically transfer my knowledge. You need to be active, you need to respond, you need to be a participant of this dialogue, mm -hmm. and when I see your feedback, I can adjust my teaching of you in certain ways so that I meet your demand. But if you are not active, if you are not interested, if you are not engaged, whatever we do, 
uh, even if I come in a glittery cloth like those yesterday <laughs> and sing here about maps, won't help. Okay, thank you. about people, the way people learn, and it's clear that they don't learn in the same way. Some people are not engaged in activities, <coughs> others more in reflective activities, and I really like this idea that, okay, we really have to put in people's shoes in all kinds of sizes of shoes, and actually addressing them according to their needs, not according to the needs of the system. But more about this probably on a different, uh, or on the, the closing uh, conference of the next stage of, uh, <laughs> of the funding scheme. Okay, um, the <coughs> next uh, project will come from Estonia and it's exciting because uh, it's exciting science for sustainable development and it's coming from Narva language research. Next. Connected 
with the fact that we had difficulties with financial reporting of Norwegian partners. Because it was very difficult to get all uh, necessary documents since we have different financial regulations. But we managed with financial reporting and we managed to establish professional and warm personal relations. It is interesting and important for us to see differences and similarities of our work and develop new initiatives together. Uh, now we have following outcome. Five international meetings were carried out. The cities established good cooperation and communication and worked together without uh, external help. The materials were worked out and tested with Estonian and Norwegian students. The product, a compendium, is available in several languages. Uh, we have several unexpected results too. We have launched two negotiations with uh, representatives of another culture to solve problems not to despair in difficult situation when you see that situation is going wrong. <laughs> to get satisfaction from finally finding of the right partner with similar aims and values. <laughs> to manage with stress. With our initiative, we promoted the development of quality, creativity and innovation in upper secondary education and integrated the green growth and sustainability issues. At our last product event, teachers from different schools suggested the following uh, activities to make the process, uh, product sustainable. To support outdoor education and uh, uh, excursion for students using the product materials. To arrange more practical works, studying camps, and resources. To teach science and English together. To keep the website open and to add more uh, activities and tasks from other teachers. To involve students to develop their own tasks and videos into teaching process. On the 1st of March, we applied for the student exchange to Northwest Junior Program. We hope that our cooperation will continue for a few years. And uh, this is the uh, And I have a uh, I, I, I have a show uh, videos. I have uh, two videos. This one from uh, Estonia and. Uh, and this one, uh, one from Norway. But if you want, you can see in my computer, it is not possible to see here. No, thank you very much. And uh, I hope it, is, it was uh, interesting for you too. Okay, so we're getting better and better on uh, this. Because we still have a really several minutes. Good. Okay, uh, do you want to take some questions, maybe, or some comments? I do. Okay, so questions, comments on the Estonian presentation? Yes, please. Uh, it's a general one. I really, really admire your resilience in mm -hmm. finding a new partner. It was brilliant, <coughs> you didn't give up. It can happen that you sometimes uh, don't really manage to do it. I also understand that schools have a lot of challenges because the administrative processes were very demanding. And I can't imagine how much we appreciate that you've made all the efforts to do that. I hope the regulations for the next period, which we have worked very hard, would be easier, and that the program operators will try to also discuss nationally with their uh, finance ministries, uh, also to uh, lessen the burden uh, on the financial reporting and other other documents, but I think uh, all said and done, what you've achieved 
despite having lost your first partner, finding a new one is really brilliant. To all schools here, because higher education institutions are used to doing a lot of internationalization. But when I see schools doing it, it is really, really amazing because we know how many challenges you have. Good job done. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Uh, then uh, let's make things simple. Simple is the name of the next project that is coming actually from uh, from Hungary, and it, it is coming from Laurent Theodor University. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, and it stands for Startup and Innovation Management Simulation. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll put your presentation. If you don't, I mean, you can make things simpler and actually use this presentation. So. <laughs> I like making things simpler. <laughs> <laughs> research assistant and my PhD thesis is about more about neuroscience <coughs> and what I want to say um, if you are really um, want to like be successful in your life I think it's nothing better than educating yourself and as a another point uh, if we are talking about successful collaboration in my point of view there is uh, three factors um, that I'm thinking is most important to get the successful collaboration 
is people, communication, and trust. If there is no people, then there's no communication, and of course, if there is no communication, then there's no any trust. And of course, in the end, there, if there's no any trust, then you have, I think, you wouldn't have haven't met cooperation. So I'll tell you a little bit how it are like start uh, all, our project. So um, it actually was set up by Professor Jens Planke in the University of Oslo. He immediately started looking uh, collaboration partners in Latvia. Luckily for us, there isn't so many who is working in neuroscience in Latvia. And uh, my professor and mentor in Latvia, she immediately responds in the email and she uh, wanted to do this a great opportunity for collaboration. And uh, as I said, like our project is more about altering disease. So for me as a research researcher, uh, the overall goal was to uh, get a new strategy treatment for altering disease. And another aim was of course is uh, making new collaboration and of course student mobility exchanging to learn a lot of new methods and how to work with the uh, lot of different equipments. And what I want to also say why it's maybe so important to me about the neuroscience is that Alzheimer's disease is the disease who is spreading in both countries. And despite the enormous efforts so far, there is still no cure for Alzheimer's disease. So I will be a little bit selfish now. I will talk about me. So uh, now I'm really successful being a student in University of Latvia, but uh, when I finally finished with my master's thesis, I still was thinking that there are still a lot of things for to learn in other countries. And all of what I have done till now was with the motivation to improve myself as a person and expand my interest field in science. And I knew that I would love to still develop a scientist in medicine. And in September of 2015, um, I got one spent chance to do that, and I totally uh, took it. And after three months, I was already in the University of Oslo and started doing my research in nine months. So this is actually basically the building, Neuro Neurodiversity Research.